Hello everybody, it's Caitlin here. Today I am making an orange sickle soap. So first thing I need to do is mix up my lye solution. Okay, so I have that all mixed in. It's about 195 degrees now. And this is some mulberry silk that I'm adding to my hot lye solution. And I'm just going to stir it until that dissolves. I really was waiting for this to explode on me again because I have, um, I already dissolved the citric acid in the water before I added the lye. So I added 2% citric acid. And then I added the lye to the water and it did heat up a lot quicker with the citric acid in it. But all, all of the lye dissolved and now I added my mulberry silk. Alrighty, and here's the hot lye solution going into my hard oils and butters. I have coconut oil, palm oil, and mango butter in here. And now I just have to melt it down. This usually takes about five minutes, depending on how soft the hard oils and the butter is. If it's a really hot day and I don't have my AC on, it melts down much quicker. But in the winter time when the house is set to like 67, 68, 69 degrees, it takes a little bit longer to melt down and into my olive oil and my apricot kernel oil. I am going to be adding a tablespoon of coconut milk powder. All right, now let's check on this. Temperature is 109 degrees. This one is 71 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my soft oils to this mixture. And I'm going to hand stir it. All right, I'm going to add my fragrance, which is um, a Crafter's Choice fragrance oil from Wholesale Supplies Plus. And it is orange sickle. So I'm going to go ahead and add that into my bowl here, my container. And I'm just going to hand stir this in also. Last time I used this fragrance, it behaved really well. So I'm hoping this time it does the same. That would be awesome. And let's check this temperature. 100 degrees, so it went down nine degrees from adding the um, other oil in. So now this is room temperature in a hot climate. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna just stick blend this for about two seconds, just to make sure that everything is well incorporated before I add my colorants. Thank you. 
Okay, and you don't really need too much with this small of a batch. You don't really need to blend that much. My sleeve went up. Ugh. Okay, so I'm just gonna stir this a little bit. The first color is going to be um, like a neon orange. I originally got it from Soapbox Micas. It's a uh, neon orange yellow, I believe it's called. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pour it into this container now. And I'm gonna pour this. About that much. And if I wanna add more, I can add more. And then in this container, I have uh, Nurture Soap Orange Vibrance Mica which is a lot more tame of an orange when you're working with a neon next to it. And then the rest of the batch will be white. I'm not sure yet though um, how much I wanna do of white because I have, let's see here, about eight or 900 milliliters in that. Oops. About 300 in this one and about 200 in this one. So I'm going to stir this neon orange yellow first. I love neon soaps. I don't really make them that often, but I really love them. I love a good natural looking bar, but I also love a really, really vibrant bar. This is just a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And then this is a a more muted orange compared to the other one, even though its name is Vibrant. <laughs> Alrighty, and then in this one, I have some oil dispersed titanium dioxide. So I'm actually going to get my little blender here and whisk it just to pick up some of that titanium dioxide from the um, from the bottom. This doesn't have to have a lot of white to it. I just wanted it to be a little bit brighter than this, the soap batter by itself. That would be pretty, just like a white and beige swirl. I'm like shaking the table because I'm leaning against it. It's like midnight right now. Everybody in my house is sleeping, so I am soaping when I have a chance. So first thing I'm gonna do is do like a drop swirl with these oranges. So I'm gonna add my orange vibrance first. And the neon. This is gonna be messy. And I'm not saving any of this for the top. So I'm gonna scrape it out. This is behaving really well. This is going really well. 
I'm pretty excited. This is a new formulation of oils that I've used in the past. I just wanted to try it out to see how it would how it would go and it so far it's doing good. Move that to the side. I just don't like these little spouts here. See how this goes. I want to do a nice plop. And then I want to kind of ladle the rest of this onto the top of the soap. So I'm gonna go closer, because the closer you go, the more shallow the pour. And I'm just going to swirl it onto the top to kind of cover up the orange, because I want the very top to be white. Okay, this is very fluid still, but that's okay. I have here my little orange slices from Soma Sundries. I believe that's what it's called. And I believe I pronounced it right, who knows, I don't know. So I cut them in half to stick them into the top of the soap. And I marked um, an inch and a quarter for my bar size to make sure that I didn't do this wrong like I did the first time. This might be too um, too soft still. And I'm sticking these down far enough so that I can um, put the lid on it to isolate them. I might not though, depending on if I, if I don't want these to get soggy. Your dehydrated fruit slices will go a lot further if you cut them in half. Cause like I only used four slices and this bar or this soap is going to use only four of them and there's eight bars in this. Oh no, oh, that would be cute. It's too bad, too bad, too sad. I don't want it to get too crazy. I don't want these to get too soft. Otherwise I would lay it down. That's really pretty. Oh no, stop it. Tragedy. Get out of here. Well, we'll see what happens to that one. Like I said, this soap is still pretty soft. Oh man. It's a little soapy on the one side, but that's okay. Hopefully it doesn't turn it brown. I might get another slice and pull that one out just to be sure. Don't you dare fall over. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get another slice just because I'm nervous about that turning brown. Okay, so I am going to put the lid on this and just wrap it in the towels. Hopefully it will fully gel without disturbing those orange slices. And I did replace the one that tipped over and the whole side covered. And I set it off to the side to see what the soap will do to it to let you guys know what the soap will do to it. And then you'll know for future reference, and I'll know if I can put these sideways on my soap without them turning brown. All right, I will see you for the cut. Alrighty, I am back for the cut. My power is out, 
So I am using the natural light to cut this. So cool looking. It did partially gel. So that neon is still pretty bright. I believe it's the neon that's still bright. And then the orange vibrance gelled is actually more tame than if it was ungelled, which is crazy to me. Are you gonna watch? My son's in here. Go ahead. My son, you can stand up. My son Garrett, he's a, a, almost a year and a half. And he wants to come see what mommy's doing so he could watch me cut this. Since I always kick him out of this room. That fragrance actually made uh, the batter pretty fluid, which was really nice. Puppies. Yeah. Nope, don't play with it. I had to move where I was putting my soap because he kept trying to grab the bars after I cut them. <laughs> Hi, Garrett. Who is that? Who is that? There's cars driving by in front of my house. Normally, I don't film with the natural light because I would look like a showroom with yeah. my windows open to the front of my house in the street like 20 feet away. <laughs> and I don't want people just like driving by and looking into my house while I'm just standing here staring out the window making soap. <laughs> so that's why I use artificial lighting when making soap. When I move up to the upstairs room, the windows to the back of the house. So I will be able to use that natural light up there because I don't have to worry about anybody in my back field staring at me. Cause there's a stop sign right in front of my house too. So people will stop and they have time. They'll sit there and text and do whatever at that stop sign. As you can see, this is a little crumbly right at the bottom because this part is what didn't gel. So it's a little softer, but you could see that difference there where it's dark and then a little lighter, which I actually like the way it looks ungelled and gelled. So and with the swirls, it's really okay that it partially gelled. I really like it. But it's just so soft when it doesn't gel. And then there's what it looks like gelled. That darker orange. Or not gelled, ungelled. This is ungelled soap. Well, that worked out. I really like the way this, this turned out. This was a very last minute decision. What are you doing, Garrett? He's getting into stuff. <laughs> Not soaping stuff, but stuff. And this is why I'm moving out of the dining room and up into a room that I can lock. I know. Alrighty, so I'm going to have to let these sit probably for a couple of days before I could clean them up. So uh, I guess I will insert a picture at the end of the video of what they look like after I clean them up. Plain. Oh my goodness. What are you doing? After I clean them up, plain and bevel them. But as you can see, the left here with the orange slice, that is gelled for the most part. And this is the ungelled soap, which... That's wild to me that the ungelled soap is brighter than the gelled soap. Very interesting. Alrighty. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you would like to purchase my available soaps, I have an Etsy and it's sprinkled clean soap. Uh, and I will see you in my next video. All right, thank you for watching. Bye.